Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Call the Damn Leads, the show by sales professionals for sales professionals. I'm your host, Drewby Wilson. With 20 years in the game, I've been through it, heard about it, seen a lot of it. Now I'm bringing it to you, my favorite people on the planet, the sales community. Let's be honest, sales is the greatest job in the world. It literally gives us the opportunity to build any life that we want if we're willing to do the work and call the damn leads. Now, today's guest, I'm very, very excited to have on. He is the first of what I hope to be many who have taken me up on the offer by going over to the website, filling out the form and saying, hey, man, I've got some stories to tell. Let's get on and chat. So I'd like to welcome the one of the owners of Egress Pros out of Long Island, my friend, Mr. Randy Goldbaum. What's up, brother? Hey, man. Thank you so much for having me. And I I got to tell you, I love it. Call the damn leads. I love it, man. Excited to be here. I appreciate that. It's one of those things that I knew when I started this brand, it would get in front of people who just get it, who are like, man, that's the game. I totally understand. This is how you create success, especially for all those new business owners out there. So Randy, I want to jump right in, man. Tell me a crazy ass sales story from your journey in the game. So the story I'm going to tell you is my very first time on the road. I was 20 something years old. I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was. And I was working, <laughs> I was working for a major specialty confectionery company. I was working in customer service and I was begging, get me. I was like a caged tiger. Let me go into the field. Let me make something happen. And I was given a target list of accounts that they were unable to convert. For whatever reason, they gave up. The sales team gave up. I went into the field. One of the first uh, stores I went to was a store in Long Island called Ralph Rotten. And they served all kinds of bulk treats. And they were a very large user for a mom pa store. I walked into the store. I met with the owner. Cole called him. He sat with me. I went through my whole spiel. But I took an angle. He was very, the notes, uh, handwritten notes at the time said he was very loyal to his present distributor. And what I did is I went in there wearing my manufacturer hat. That was my strategy. I'm gonna talk about things that we do that are different from the everyday products he's buying from his distributor. That should open the gate for me. So as I told you, I was in my 20s. I went through a great sales presentation in my opinion. And he listened to everything. <laughs> and he said to me, look me right in the eyes. His name is Shelly Styles. He says, now what I'd like you to do is go outside, take your earring out and come back in. I go, you kidding me? He goes, come back in and represent. I went outside, I took my earring out, you know, did my hair, walked back in, represented the whole entire presentation I had already done. <laughs> Fast forward, we were doing business together for over 20 years. I did millions of dollars with him. And the lesson I learned, the lesson I learned from that is you can't give up. You got to fight for it to, to get in front of people and you have to have a strategy, uh, pre-qual planning, I call it, prior to going in. I love pre-qualifying business. That's one of my favorite things to talk about because so many individuals get into business and just say, well, yeah, man, anyone and everyone that's got a credit card in Nepal should be buying from me. Like I've got a product that they've got a need. Come and get it from me. That's not the case at all. I promise you that will lead you to nothing but stress, headaches, and probably a heart attack if you try to live that life for too long. You do not need to do business with everyone. However, I do love the importance of being willing to stay resilient and just stay at it. The idea that you could be rejected in that way and how you had a decision to make, right? Hey, I can get offended and I can call this guy an asshole and say, man, I'm not representing what I just like. You heard me, dog. What do you want? No, hell no. You were like, okay, sir. If that's yeah. the way I'd like, okay, no, take my... <laughs> I, 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 I gotta tell again. you, I gotta tell you, Drewby, it's the last time I wore an earring in the field, and 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 it really taught me a, a major lesson and the value. And you just said the value of pre-call planning. You know, one thing I I always say about my to my sales team is you have two ears, one mouth. Listen twice as much as you talk, because the customers will give you the information you need to create that that strategy. You know, what is that pain point that you're looking to solve? What is your solution for that pain point? Listen more than you talk. 
That's so good. And one of the easiest ways that a, a new sales professional can do that, let's just share a little value with them while we're here, is instead of talking at the person, start asking more questions. And every time they answer your question, simply reframe it with the next question that's leading them to the thing that you need them to talk about. That is the easiest way to just shut your mouth is just ask questions because after you've asked it, you have to shut up and listen. There's like nothing else to be said. You'll laugh. I tell all my salespeople, it's, I, I'm married 27 years and I can still remember being single. And one of the things I learned back then was if you met a nice girl at the bar, the best thing I could do is listen and not talk. <laughs> if I spoke too much, <laughs> I was going to blow my chances. So, And people, people want to do business with people like them. They want to do mm. business with someone similar. So, you know, in taking it into that aspect, if they were, if they said, Hey, the guy I'm dating never listens to me. I was the best listener in the world again, but that translates right over to uh, sales. I believe it translates right over. A hundred percent. Well, you said it yourself. It's if you shut up and listen, they will tell you everything you need to know in order to help them solve the problem that they already know they have. You're not there for no reason unless you just cold call. But even then, if you're like in the door, you're there because there's holes in the roof or there's they need a new egress. And you can clearly see that because there's nothing on the house. So it's like an obvious need for them, especially if it's going to bring them up to code. Right. You have a reason for being there. You simply just have to remind them like you have a problem. I'm here to help you solve that problem if this is the time for you to do so. And that's the cool thing about sales is like if you just start letting them know and make them aware first, awareness is where it gets started because some people don't even know they have a problem until you talk to them and ask questions that get them thinking, well, shit, I never thought about that. That's a right. great point. And our product um, especially falls right under that. P many people don't even know that egress is an option. They didn't know that they have it very easily in one day. They can have a second means of exit from their basement and so part of my job is education. But yes. Randy, I've owned three houses in my life. I don't know shit. I didn't know. I have like an egress. Was that on a roof? Like, what do you mean, dog? So this is the things that oh, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And you don't so know what it's you don't so know. cool to, to, to be someone like that mm -hmm. who educates. So what, like, this is one of the things I love to ask. When it comes to sales, what would you say is your superpower and how do you train that to your guys? So that, that's great. That's a great question. And I'm going to tell you my superpower, my strategy, my strategy, again, is always that pre-call preparedness. If you pre-call prepare, you'll be you'll stand in front of that buyer and there's nothing you can't do. So I've learned that there's four types of buyers, in my opinion. There's the analytical buyer. There's a direct buyer. There's an outgoing buyer and a kind buyer. So if you can be a chameleon and take on that personality of those kind of buyers and you've pre-call plan and you're sticking to your strategy, that's a secret weapon. They're going to walk mm. right into, uh, right into line of what you're trying to accomplish. But I think the first thing is to recognize what problem you're there and what solution you have for it. What kind of buyer is it? And are you prepared to answer those questions? Preparation is Ooh. everything, you know, man, you that's know, so good. Every sports team that I've ever watched practices every day, right? NFL, you practice Monday through Thursday. Friday's a walkthrough. Saturday, you're off. Sunday, you play the game. With my sales team, we role play on a continued basis. We learn from each other, but we're practicing. Practice, practice, practice. Not enough people practice. Yeah, not enough people role play because it's such an awkward thing to do, especially when you're role playing with other sales guys because they – I mean, let's be honest, we're assholes. So sometimes we're like, we're trying to be like the most obnoxious objections on the planet. And this is why it's so important. Because right. when you're in the moment, you're probably never going to get that outrageous of an objection. So when you answer the normal stuff, it just flows like, psh, 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 don't Agreed. even have to think about it. Agreed. That is Practice. so, so right. good. And, and I tell you, now, the way we've done it, I, I learned this uh, through... Uh, a meeting with different uh, sales executives and so forth. The way we do it, one person in our group will play the customer, one person will play the salesperson, and one person's just an observer. That observer doesn't yeah. say a word. And then we rotate. And then we all sit down and review, because now we've all been through 
that same scenario. We're all in a place that we can give you what we thought you did great, where you think you can improve. And at the same time, you're learning from each other. The salespeople don't always share their successes with each other so that we can all be successful. You know what I really love about that methodology, though, is that like it just came to me in this realization, which is what's going to be cool about how I explain this, is that in that scenario, you have three guys, all three of them run through each of these positions. And then on the end of it, you come together for review. And what's going to happen in that time is that the guys, as they go, like maybe they start as the, the customer and then they go to the sales guy and then they observe. By the time they're sitting in that observer seat, they're starting to realize all the things that they could have improved upon or that they could have done differently. So now they go into the review feeling like, well, they're not just criticizing me. I realize that I could have done this better. So this is my awareness now. And so they're empowered by it versus feeling like, man, they're just fucking every time I get in, they just talk shit about me because they did it. Right. Man. But you no, said you're something now learning you, on your own. Drewby, what you said is true. Nobody wants to role play. Nobody wants to sit in mm. front of each other and role play. But doing it this way, what I have found, sometimes the guy who went first and now he, I want to go again when he's the observer. Let me go again. <laughs> I can do it better. You know, so it becomes like a self-fulfilling, I don't want to call it competition, but it's a it's a healthy competition. You know what? That's a great topic though. Let's get into that because healthy competition in a sales team is so, so valuable. And also, it can become the toxic end of an organization. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? How, like, first of all, how big is your sales team, Randy? So our sales team are three reps in the field every day. If they're in here, something's wrong. And then I have two people uh, making outbound phones, phone calls. Fantastic. Okay, so that's a that's a pretty good-sized team for a you know, small to medium-sized business. Mm -hmm. What are you doing or how do you like to implement that friendly competition and keep it from crossing that line of like toxicity. And that and that's very important. So we've done a couple of different things. Number one, with every sales rep, we track the number of installs that they've successfully sold. And we have a we have the thousand well club, we have the five hundred well club, and they get trophies, like a plaque. And they strive mm. to be on that wall, which is very important. And then what we do with that information, we convert it into a bio about the rep and that rep will when they leave your house if they don't sign you they will leave a bio about themselves which is a quick one-liner but maybe 10 or 15 real customer five-star reviews or four-star reviews mm. and if they're doing following all those steps their success rate of, of closing a deal is very high we also something we also do and and we do it at the end of the year Every year we create a slush fund and we give the winner of the whoever sold the most and it's sold the most at the highest GP. OK, yep. we want to maintain our gross profit. <laughs> I don't believe I don't believe that price is the only decision making tool that a customer has if you present right. I understand price is important, yep. but anybody who's making a decision on price only is probably not a good customer for you. Um, they need the value. The sales rep, they need to value the company. So we created a slush fund, I call it, of monies. Last year, I think it came out to be five or $6,000. And whoever had the highest GP and the highest most sales won that money. And I got to tell you, watching the phone room, because they also make money from, from getting yeah. good solid, okay? And watching our salespeople not mit frown, but clap for each other shows teamwork. And it has been a great great uh a great tool for us and i also do something else very silly we give once a week at our sales meeting every monday the we ask three successes and three failures and based on how well you prepare for it we give a box of we give like a box of chocolate to everybody so they probably take it home to their hey, wives but they love nothing it. wrong with that yeah exactly right it you know what, though, and that's so cool that you're you're thinking that way, because it's not just about what are you doing to help them be successful, but how does that translate everywhere all the way back into the home life? Because, yeah. I mean, let's be honest, sales can be a grind. And when you're in those challenges and you're on it, it it's it can cause issues at home. Um, and, and one of the things I talk about a lot on the show is like, I'm very vulnerable. I almost lost my family on multiple occasions because I was too focused on the sales side of things. So I like that you're like, hey man, let's do some things that can also translate and take back to the house, you know, box of chocolates, whatever. There was something that you mentioned though that I, I wanna hit on because I think this is gonna be really valuable for the listener 
is you had talked about price, the objection of price, and how that's not always the end all be all. And even if you're selling only on price, it can lead to an issue. I think personally, there are three objections at all times. And, and that's any one of these could be on the table. Price is one of them. And usually that's just because your value hasn't exceeded the dollar amount that they see in their mind. So they can't feel very good about that. Right. Timing, I think, is another one that can be an objection that not enough people give credit to. Because there's been times where I've said, yes, I'm going to do this, but in 30 days. And the guy pushed me too much and I just decided not to work. That turned off. Because he didn't want Yeah, exactly. And then the third one is a combination of information and decision maker. Because you can have one decision maker that has too much information and they're going to have to keep like figuring out what to do with it. Or that the person you're talking to has to take that information to the decision maker so that they can decide together. Would you agree with that? I would agree. And I think if I could add one more thing to that, especially I'm what, here. Yeah, come one on. more topic, especially what you said last. I think it's really important when you're going on a sales call that you recognize who's going to be in that room. And, you know, I came from corporate sales initially. Now I'm home sales in corporate sales. I want to know everybody's title and what they're what they were responsible for. So I knew I was talking to the right people at the right time and mm. always have a great relationship with the gatekeeper. That's key. That's key. Yes. Uh, in, in home sales, uh, we use the term one legger. You want there to be if they're a married couple, you want them both there, especially the wife. The wife is making the decision 90% of the time. And if she's not there, we will try to reschedule so we can have both people there. Because they're never going to tell the story the way you did. <laughs> they're never going to re-explain. <laughs> the and it doesn't matter what you leave behind. Uh, it's never going to translate the same. So I think to your point, it is super important to know who you're presenting to. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, I'm just going to share because this is one of the things that I've done in that situation. Like, let's just say that you cannot lock both of them down. It's just impossible. What I like to go into that, if I know that there's a situation like that, usually my my response is, hey, I totally understand that, you know, you'd like to make decisions together as a, as a couple. That's very important to me. My family and I, we are very much the same. Like my wife and I, like this, we don't make decisions without chatting with each other. However, I also know that coming into this, we, we had the conversation of how important it was for you both to be here. We recognized that it was just impossible for your timing. So we already know you had a conversation about what was going to occur here today. And I believe that you were the one put in charge of making this decision because you were the one who could be here to receive all the information and make the best choice for your family. So why don't we go ahead and get this locked in? Because you've already told me, you know, this is what she's going to want to do. And then heaven forbid, if in 24 hours, you you know, whatever comes up, you guys just call me, we'll get this squared away. But it makes no sense for me to leave here and have to keep waiting to get you guys what you want. When you've already had the conversation, she knew I was going to be here. And you've said this is exactly what she wants. So let's just get this thing locked in and move forward. And that's called listening. You listen to that customer. They said everything right. You were listening to them 100%. And you also just said something that a topic that I bring up all the time. Most salespeople do not ask for the order. They do a presentation and they thank you and they leave. You got to ask for the order. That's the most important thing. Bro, I, I'm, we could go on another 20 minute rant about people that are really great about having conversation and then never ask for the sale. Yeah. You should be asking for the sale the entire time. You should be basically leading up with those questions of like, and if this sounds good, we're going to get this done today, right? And they're like, 100%. Well, yeah, I mean, what? Well, yeah, okay. Cool. So, like, and, to me, and, those and, are those time zone questions. I didn't mean to talk over you. That happens a no, lot during, you know, a lot of companies these days, even a, a small company like us, we have a CRM. And, you know, we look for very important notes that will help our sales rep make it seamless, right? Again, you just said it. Who's going to be at the home? And then we ask things, when you're looking to get this done by? Now I back mm. them into a timeline. Have you been saving funds for this? Are you going to finance it? Everything is teed up nicely. And then we try on our own to, to give the sales rep a feel if it's an analytical buy or a kind guy. So they know how to walk up to that house. And I mm. always like leaving a tidbit. Like uh, I know you're in Dallas. We're New York big giant fans. So if someone says they're a Dallas Cowboy fan, I'll joke around with them and say, okay, I'll make sure the rep knows when he gets there, we got to increase your price by 10%. And 
and we'll put that in as a joke and it's an icebreaker right away. Yeah. And, and Ryan, when uh, just using him as an example, one of my reps, when he knocks on the door, he, he'll say it right away. Hey, look, whatever I tell you, we got to add 10 percent on. And it's a joke and, and it really lightens the sales. We're big on good phone. That's something we demand right away that whoever answers the phone gives my clients good phone, answers all questions, makes you feel good. It's speed dating. Build a quick relationship, get some things that they want to talk about, make sure it's in the notes. So when that rep walks in there, it's as if he was on the phone, he or she was on the phone with you. God, that's so good. And that's such a valuable lesson. I hope the the people who are here with us today really stop for a second and take that to heart because the more you can prepare your reps, your team, your your whatever, even your client, the more you can prepare them for what's going to happen, the better are your odds of getting the deal done. I love setting expectations during that pre-qualifying process because that can easily be like part of what makes it easy to close the sale because people are going, well, yeah, I already know exactly how this is going to go. You've laid it all out for me very clearly. Like It's kind of a no-brainer. Or yeah. you may go through part of that and explain to someone part of what that process is going to have to be and they'd be like, well, I'm absolutely unwilling to do that. So you're not halfway into a deal. And then all of a sudden they're trying to back out of it, like presetting right. those expectations, pre-qualifying the business. It will save you so much time and time is money. Time is money. And that's beautiful, and man. I, in, I my world, that, Randy. in my world, I can also price qualify in some businesses. That's hard to do. But, you know, as you said, when we first got on the phone, you didn't even know what egress was. Right. So most people don't have a, 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 a idea of what the price is going to be. So if yep. somebody thinks it's a thousand dollars and we give them a, a, the price, that might not be a, 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 a might not be worth sending a rep out there because we're just too sure. far apart. Um, and we've had those situations. There's no everybody has. Well, one of the things that I've really appreciated about getting to know you, Randy, so far is that. I can tell you just genuinely want to help other people. You just want to be in a good position to play. Hey, this is what I am. This is who I do do it for. This is how we do it and why we do it this way. And I got to say, man, I'm super grateful for you taking some time to be here. I Thank love you. the fact that you were the action taker who was like, yeah, he said I can come on and share some stories. Let's tell some stories, Doug. Like, let's talk. Well, um, look, so and I'm proud. And I'm proud to, you know, I'm, I'm a proud uh He's repping the uh, gear. Yeah, I got the gear. I got the gear. He's an ambassador, baby. There That's what go. I love to see. And and so, Randy, I, I'm sure we have plenty more to chat about, you know, in our, our relationship over time here. Uh, I want to be respectful of your time here today. One thing I always like to ask before we close out the show, there's a lot of new sales reps coming into the game. I mean, you know, man, every day there's someone new deciding to get into yep. sales and to take action to change their life. Let's hope that they find this podcast so that they can grab some of the golden nuggets that you've already dropped. But let's give them one more. If you can give them just one thing to focus on in this new sales career in order to find success, what would you tell them? I'm going to tell you two things. Uh, of course you are. Come All on. right. Of course I am. I'm just, right. One is networking. Get out there and network. Grow your sphere of influence. If you're a good networker and you can build your and, and get people behind you, now all of a sudden your sales team is all the members of your networking group. Super mm -hmm. important to network. I'm going to tell you something else that I would read and watch every video and book by a gentleman named Jack Daly. He is an incredible, incredible, the most incredible uh, sales educator, I'll call him. That I've ever That's met a good with, term for it. sat with. He is a machine, and there's not a chance, Drewby. There's not a chance that you would watch a video of his and not want to go out and sell something. <laughs> he's just—he's a rock star uh, of uh, of sales. Those would be my two biggest pieces of advice for anybody who's uh, new to the sales world. Well, I appreciate it. I know that I personally had a great time today. I know the listener had a good time, got some value. Man, some of the stuff that we talked about, we haven't talked about in dozens of episodes that I've recorded so far. So it's always nice to get a fresh perspective, to meet someone who's coming into the game with just that pure heart of how can we help anyone that shows up to give us a little bit of their time and listen. Uh, and I think you've done an amazing job Thank of that. You. So if you guys are in the Long Island area, you need some egress work now that you know what it is, because I didn't know what it was. Give my man Randy a shout over at Egress Pros. 
Holler at him more than anything, though, Randy. If they did want to come and check you out, they want to follow you because I know you're creating great content. What's the easiest way for them to come and find you? So egresspros.com is our website, and we're more than just a local company. We're actually selling dealerships throughout the country. We just opened up D.C. We just opened up Virginia. I have uh, people up in Buffalo looking. Egress is a feel-good product. You're increasing people's home value. You're adding healthy, fresh air to their basements, bringing in national sunlight, increasing their home value, keeping our first responders safe and keeping family members safe. Every night when I close my eyes, I know I potentially saved a life. It's a great feeling. Man, that is freaking awesome and cannot recommend enough that you guys go check out Randy and his team. He's been amazing guests here today. More than anything, as I said, if you are here listening, If you got value out of this conversation, go share it on social media, send it to some friends, someone in the sales industry that you know, an entrepreneur or someone that wants to be an entrepreneur. This is what we do to help people. This is why we are here. So make sure you share the show, tag us on social media. And if you have a story, much like my friend Randy, he's the action taker. Number one, you could be next. Go over to callthedamnleads.com forward slash podcast. Send us your info. Let me know what you're into. I'd love to bring you on, share your story on the show, because that's what we're here to do. Help each other grow. Randy, cannot say thank you enough again, man. I appreciate you. You got it, brother. Thank you. Absolutely. We'll see you guys on the next one. Go call those damn leads. 